This video is brought to you by NordVPN. When it comes to junk food, there's no shortage of unhealthy side effects. You've probably heard all about the health concerns of eating too many chips or candies, but many of us wouldn't necessarily expect that certain snacks could leave us with shortness of breath or coughing fits. But what if there was a salty snack that could make you sick just from breathing in the air around it? Hey, sauce me some of that popcorn. Popcorn, <gasps> a buttery, salty treat for your home movie nights, or a dangerous and deadly threat that could leave you struggling to breathe. Damn it. So come along and let's learn a tale of caution related to this confection and how one man's love of popcorn left him to develop an irreversible lung disease. But first, today's episode deals with food and medical conditions. We're not doctors. We're just looking at a topic from an unbiased position. If you want to learn about the health effects of your diet, we encourage you to talk to a licensed dietitian. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Put a movie on, grab a bag of popcorn, throw it in the microwave, and enjoy both the soothing sound of kernels popping and the sweet, sweet smell of melted butter and salt. It's a ritual that many of us have indulged in, but no matter how much you love popcorn, doing that two or three times a day seems a bit much, right? Well, not for Wayne Watson, a centennial Colorado man who enjoyed popcorn just a little too much. Bro, I appreciate that you have an episode going on here, but it is movie night, and this movie night has been made possible by NordVPN. Yeah, with, with NordVPN, every night is movie night thanks to their 5,300 servers in 59 countries. With that much globe trotting from our couch, we can watch our favorite shows no matter where we are. Whether that's on the couch, in bed, or at the coffee shop. Because not only can we have six simultaneous connections, but with double data encryption, our data is secure even while traveling or out in public. And our connection is always super fast. And best of all, it's not even costing us that much thanks to the huge 73% discount with an extra little gift of four free months at nordvpn.com slash bro. Or with our discount code bro at sign up. Anyways, it's movie night, bro. Is nothing sacred to you, you monster? <laughs> no. Aw, oh, man. Watson reportedly ate roughly two bags of popcorn a day for 10 years, which would total over 7,300 bags of popcorn when you take leap years into account. And as you do, Watson would have been enjoying the wafting buttery aroma of his fluffy evening snack. Oh well, yeah, that's one of the best parts. But how could someone eat that much popcorn and not get sick? Well, that's the thing, he did. Oh. But strangely enough, the problem wasn't an upset stomach from too much popcorn like you might expect. Instead, in 2007, the then 53-year-old furniture salesman found himself developing respiratory issues. The culprit? Well, according to the National Jewish Medical and Research Center in Denver, the issue was a disease known as obliterative bronchiolitis, most commonly found in factory workers in the food industry that have prolonged exposure to a chemical known as diacetyl. Obliterative bronchiolitis is an irreversible lung disease that affects the smallest airways in the lungs known as bronchioles, causing these airways to become damaged and inflamed, and can lead to scarring that blocks the airways, leaving those affected with a dry cough cough, fatigue, wheezing, and shortness of breath. And if this episode is taking your breath away, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get more brew. Uh, it, I heard that statistically you're more likely to do it if I ask nicely, so uh, back to the episode. Let's walk things back a little. 2000, a mystery was unfurling in Jasper, Missouri. Eight patients in the town had begun suffering from breathing problems, and biopsies showed that all eight had contracted a fairly rare disease. That Opalation brontosaurus, or whatever. Oblit bronchus. Obliterative bronchiolitis. But nice try, boys. Proud of you. Yes, the eight factory workers had managed to contract the same condition. And what's more, they all shared a workplace, specifically a microwave popcorn plant. Which brings us to the other name of obliterative bronchiolitis. Popcorn lung. Popcorn lung! Popcorn lung! It, it comes at night, so, so stay in the sun! Uh, 
What? Joe, are you okay? I don't know what that was, but but I guess I just got scared. Well, it, it doesn't come at night. Instead, the culprit is the sweet, buttery flavoring used for everyone's favorite snack on movie night. Doctors researching for the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health discovered that the vapors coming from the vats of the butter flavoring were causing the lung damage, likely due to the chemical ingredient diacetyl, according to Missouri State epidemiologist Dr. Eduardo Simois. Four of these employees had developed such severe cases of popcorn lung that they needed lung transplants, and they weren't the only ones. Sixteen current and former employees at the plant filed both workers' compensation claims against the Gilston Mary Lee Corporation, which ran the factory producing hospitality and Pops Right popcorn brands, and a class action lawsuit against International Flavors and Fragrances, which made the flavors. Seven of those plaintiffs were still employed at the Gilster Mary Lee factory, with some on disability leave. And, at the time, another 21 workers showed signs of lung problems. And according to Amy Powell, a lawyer with the law firm Humphrey, Farrington, McLean and Edgar, representing the plaintiffs, the symptoms were severe. Some of these people can't even help out with household chores like mowing the lawn because they're so out of breath, and things like playing with their kids are hard for them. Gilster Mary Lee denied liability, and for some time, denied benefits as well. Are you serious? These workers are out here with their long ravioli. Alveoli. Popping like corn and they want to deny benefits? Unfortunately. But this number would only rise, with 43 employees of the Jasper plant winning suits between 2004 and 2007, with, sadly, at least one passing away in that time. Though, according to the NIOSH doctors, there's no threat to people who are eating microwave popcorn at home once a week for movie night. Which brings us back to Wayne Watson. See, microwave popcorn being safe is mostly accurate, but doesn't account for extreme cases. Like, uh, like eating two bags of popcorn a day for like 10 years straight? Yeah, that one specifically. Doctors tested Watson's home and found that the buttery smooth flavoring additive, diacetyl levels, in his home were equal to those found in popcorn plants, according to the Washington Post. When Watson was first admitted to the hospital, lung specialist Dr. Cecile Rose at the National Jewish Medical and Research Center in Denver asked him if he had eaten a lot of popcorn. His jaw dropped, and he asked me how I would possibly know that about him. Watson had become the first known non-factory worker to develop popcorn lung, a discovery that Dr. Rose shared with federal agencies, saying, We cannot be sure that this patient's exposure to butter-flavored microwave popcorn from daily heavy preparation has caused his lung disease. However, we have no other plausible explanation. In the end, Watson went the same route as all those workers who developed the disease. He sued them. Oh, you bet he did. Homie popped off. His suit targeted both Gilster Mary Lee Corp. and the supermarket chain Kroger Co. Both companies claimed that his lung disease was more likely caused by working with furniture cleaners, and that he misled the court about his daily popcorn intake. A federal jury found Glister Mary Lee Corp. liable for 80% of damages, and Kroger Co. liable for 20%, awarding Watson $7.2 million, though both companies plan to appeal the rulings. Watson also sued flavoring company FONA International, but they settled out of court. At the end of the day, it's good to take things in moderation, though that doesn't help with the many factory workers who had been exposed to diacetyl and developed popcorn lung while just being at work. Which is why America's largest hotel, restaurant, and kitchen workers union has been calling for the removal of diacetyl, writing, it could pose a serious health risk to commercial cooks, and Unite Here is calling for fast action by the food industry to cease the use of diacetyl flavoring in commercial and home cooking products. It's also worth noting that there's no set amount of diacetyl exposure that is safe, even by OSHA, according to an NPR article written in 2012. In their description of diacetyl in 2020, the FDA put no limit on the flavoring except for current good practice, though the CDC did publish a report from the NIOSH recommending specific exposure limits for factory workers in 2016. It's also worth noting that diacetyl isn't just a flavoring additive used to make popcorn taste more buttery. It can also be found naturally in butter and milk, used in butterscotch and caramel, 
and can be created through the roasting process of coffee. Huh. I'm okay with this. <clears throat> According to an article on WebMD from 2007, some of the largest microwave popcorn producers, including ConAgra, General Mills, American Popcorn Company, and Pop Weaver, have stopped using diacetyl in their products. Their brands include Orville Redenbacher, Act 2, Pop Secret, Jolly Time, and Pop Weaver. You'll also likely see some kind of warning label on your popcorn, advising you to open the bag away from your face or not breathe in the fumes. But as for Watson, well, he doesn't eat much popcorn anymore. That bubble has popped. Okay, boo, but what about that coffee? 